So right now we're going to use uh, this time to put together a basic polygon shape and we're going to place joints and bones inside that shape and then on the video after that we will um, skin it and weight those joints or weight the skin to the joints to make sure it uh, reacts appropriately to uh, the movement of those joints. So this is basically uh, the process you would take to um, to rig a character or any other type of object that you want to animate, um, particularly if it's a single mesh or or something like that. So, so let's start off um, with something very simple. I'm going to go in and create um, just a cube. So go create polygon cube and I'm going to make this not super long, but longer than it is wide. Um, and let's, let's see, that should be plenty. But let's check out the attribute editor and see exactly how long this is. So right now it's 12 and a half. I'll just go good. Go ahead and put 15. Whoops, 15. And again, I'm using centimeters here. So <clears throat> height of 0.2 would be fine. And a depth, let's just round that off to 0.25, or 2.5, I'm sorry. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and put in some uh, joints, or not joints, um, sections across this. So we'll go in the subdivision width. So it puts these new sections in across the long portion. And that will give us places on this object where the object can bend. And this would be fine the way we've got it set up here. So we're going to put some joints um, down through the center of this object so that we can rotate the joints and allow this object to bend in different contortions, maybe even animated or something like that. So if we're going to bend the object, we have to have segments or sections or edges um, going perpendicular to how that bend is going to take place in the object. So that's why we've got these little edges in here. So one of the things I like to do before I go ahead and start setting the joints is, um, you know, usually you wouldn't set joints until the object or the model that you're creating is completely finished. And uh, once it's finished, you want to go ahead and get rid of some of the extra junk that goes along with it. For instance, um, all the construction history. Um, but also, let's go ahead and select the object, go to Modify and Freeze Transformations. That'll take all of the information back to zero. And let's go to Edit, Delete by Type, and History. Okay, so now let's just go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and go to the top view, and I'm going to hit 4 in the top view, front view, and side view to make sure they're all um, wireframe. And in the top view, I'm going to start creating joints, starting on the left side and working my way to the right. And I'll probably put in about at least six joints across here. So in order to do that, let's first go into our rigging menu. So we'll go up here to the upper left of the interface, drop this list down for our different menu sets and select rigging. And then we'll go up to skeleton and create joints. Now we should, don't necessarily need to go to the option box here. Um, as long as it works okay, we should be fine. But let's just click on create joints. And uh, you'll see your cursor turns this kind of targeting um, symbol. And what we're going to do is every time you left click, it's going to create a joint. And we don't want to create oh, too many, but let's just say six. So I'm going to start at the very end here and just left click. There's my first joint. Um, if I'm going to create six, I'll kind of go about here, and I'm going to try to place it right about where an edge is, and that'll make the bend a little bit better. So there's two, three, four, and I'll go five and six. And when you're done, just hit enter, and that locks that joint system into place. So the joints are the circles, the little wedges are the bones that connect each joint to each other. Uh, the wedges are shaped like an arrow and they're pointing forward from where you first created it. Um, this is called FK, which is forward kinematics. That means that 
if I select this first joint and I hit E to rotate, it's going to rotate the entire group. Everything forward of that joint is going to move. I'll, I'll hit Control Z to undo that. And let's say I click on this joint here about in the middle. You can see it only affects the joints forward of it, and the ones back here don't move at all. So this is called forward kinematics. It's the default setting for the joint system that you place in the object. So you can um, reverse that with a system called IK, or inverse kinematics. Uh, that takes a little bit more effort, a little bit more involvement, and that's beyond what the scope of this video is about. So that's something we'll have to get into later on. For now, we're just going to focus on the basics of forward kinematics and how to link the mesh to this um, setup of joints. So. Um, I'm going to move this just slightly, make sure it's nice and centered. You can see some of these are off a little bit because I was just freehand moving them. If you wanted to, you could um, you know, snap and use all your tools to make sure everything's perfect, but we're not getting that um, crazy about this today. We're just going to keep it simple. So make sure they go f you know, fairly, down the simple, uh, fairly down the middle of this object here. Okay, so let's let's see this in the perspective view over here. So you can see what this looks like. Um, you want to make sure, you know, the, the joints that you create, they're going to come in at the zero axis, like most objects that you create. So you can see here that they're a little bit lower than the actual object that we created. So if you wanted to, you could move this, just hit W, select the first joint, and move them so it's more centered if you want to. That might make more sense. But uh, the next step is to um, bind the skin to the joints. So I'm going to hit 4 so you can see everything a little bit more clearly. Uh, the first thing you want to do when you're going to bind is select the joint system, starting with the first joint, and then shift select the skin or the mesh that you want to bind it to. And we'll go up here uh, to the rigging uh, menu and go to skeleton, uh, go to skin and bind skin. And you can see here the skin or the mesh turns pink when you select an object or one of the, the uh, joints here. I'm going to go back to um, shaded mode and let's just select one of these joints in the middle and rotate it up and see. There it is. So now we've got a system that controls how this object moves. And we can do a number of different things. We don't just have to bend it that way. We can bend it any way we want. And we could also move it. We don't have to just bend things. So you could move pieces around. I'll select this last one here and just move it back and forth. So we have all types, all kinds of ways we can control this object now and make it appear that maybe it's it's more like a flap uh, instead of a brick uh, or something like that. So I'm going to undo what we just did here. I'll undo all these back to its original piece. There we go. So it's still bound, um, but now that we've got it bound and it's connected, one of the things that uh, we should do is double check the weighting. And the weighting is a way of telling the skin how to react to the joints. So I'm going to do this on a separate video so that um, it's easier to find. And, uh, and this will conclude this particular video. So on the next one, we'll get into the weighting process.